Good afternoon. New security measures are in place at a Denver homeless shelter where a man and a woman were found dead on Saturday. Denver police are calling it a homicide. This happened at the former Doubletree Hotel along Quebec Street. That's now being used as a homeless shelter. Our own Brianna Clark went there today to learn more. Brianna? Yeah, so more security, especially outside the building. Residents tell me it's their first time they've seen a private security company patrolling the property. Some of the vehicles are marked, others are not. The mayor's office says that they're the ones who added the extra security. We're still waiting to find out why, but we do know the guards are unarmed. The Salvation Army helps operate the former hotel turned shelter. They tell me only people who live here are allowed inside the building, no visitors. And every single person who walks through the front door has to check in at the front desk. I spoke to several residents today and they all say they feel safe living here, but I'm told the atmosphere has drastically changed since Saturday. This whole building is like kind of shook, you know. Unfortunately, um, I, wasn't, I wasn't really good friends with the people who just recently passed away at all, but my friends are really deeply saddened by that and I just, I can't imagine their pain right now. They're hurting so bad. And so far this year, Denver police tell us that they've been called out to the Doubletree homeless shelter hundreds of times. Tonight at 5 o'clock, we'll take a look at that exact number and where almost half of the calls came from. So far, though, very little information is being shared by, legal, by law enforcement. Yeah, Denver police say it's still under investigation and they can't release anything, even the names of the victims. All right, Brianna, thanks. A whole lot more sun today, more than yesterday, more melting. And in many areas around the town, there are big piles of snow that need, you know, need a lot of sun right now. Not so much in this picture, though. Everything's nice and kind of brown. Looks like it's all gone Brown there. and clear. Yeah, a lot of- Clear and brown. A lot of places either were spared the snow or the <laughs> snow is checked out with these warm temperatures. Kathy's got a look at uh, what's happening now on this Monday. We wanted to welcome you back with warm, dry weather, Tom. I'm back. <laughs> You're back and thank you. It is a glorious Monday out there with temperatures in the 50s this afternoon and will go even warmer tomorrow. Spring begins tomorrow. I think we're all ready for spring. 9.06 tomorrow night, the vernal equinox. So that will mark Wednesday is the first full day of the new season. But for the last couple of days of winter, not too shabby. Sunshine in 50s today, a great day to go skiing or snowboarding, no travel issues on I-70. We have a mild dry last day of winter. Again, spring begins tomorrow night and kind of a quiet week, but there is a storm that we're tracking for the weekend that will bring a chance of showers, perhaps rain showers. Look down here. That's our storm from last week. It dropped south, cut off from the main jet stream flow and the counterclockwise circulation has brought the clouds in that Kim mentioned for yesterday. Also a few showers over the central and southern mountains. One more day and then that thing's gonna get the boot and finally move on out of here. Not before crossing southern Colorado though. So we have temperatures today in the mid 50s, some 60s on the map. We expect those numbers to go up tomorrow. Wind is not a big feature, but the wind direction is down sloping, which will help to keep us really kind of mild, dry and quiet. That system south of Albuquerque will move east tomorrow, a separate system creating travel issues on a busy spring break week for travelers in the Midwest and Northeast. But we are looking really good here in Denver for tonight with mild temperatures in the mid 50s now dropping to the upper 40s by about 10 o'clock. Coming up, we will detail the extended forecast and let you know about the next storm on the horizon. I'll let you know about a real traffic issue for people up north. Right now, I-76 shut down in both directions. This due to a multi-vehicle crash at Dahlia Street, it's north of Commerce City. The state patrol says the Dahlia Bridge over I-76 was involved in the crash when heavy machinery fell off of a flatbed that a semi was towing on the bridge. So the bridge now has to be closed while an engineer checks it out. CSP is still not saying if there are word of any injuries or if anyone is going to face any charges in that accident this afternoon. Right now, jury selection is underway for the trial of a truck driver accused of slamming into a car, killing a family of five in June of 2022. Jesus Pueblo faces five charges of vehicular homicide. Prosecutors say he was driving 70 miles per hour on I-25 in Weld County when he crashed into a car killing a family headed back to Wyoming. He did not have proper commercial driver's license and the trucking company he was working for did not have insurance. The U.S. Postal Service contracted that truck, which also didn't have the working brakes. USPS canceled its contract with the company a year later.
A bill that would ban the use that is, uh, ban the use of a widely debunked medical term is headed for the governor's desk to get a signature. The state Senate approved the bill that would ban the use of excited delirium. A Nine News investigation last year found that term has been linked to more than 255 deaths across the country, including Elijah McClain's. Many medical organizations, though, have debunked the term. They say it's not a real medical condition, and it's often used simply to justify excessive force. The bill would prohibit the term from being used in incident reports or as a cause of death. Denver police are investigating a shooting that happened overnight. They tweeted about 2 a.m. that a man had been shot at the intersection of Broadway and Ellsworth. Police didn't have any more information about how the man was doing or any possible suspects. Today marks the beginning of Republican Congressman Ken Buck's last week in Congress. He is resigning from that role of serving Colorado's 4th Congressional District effective Friday. Buck had previously announced last November that he wouldn't be running for re-election this year. But then last week he suddenly decided not to even finish out the term. A special election is now going to be held on June 25th with the remainder of Buck's term. And that will be on the same day as the congressional primary election is going on. Well, in that heavily Republican district, CD4, voters will be voting for Buck's temporary replacement while also nominating his likely permanent successor. A teenager suspected in a deadly crash last night in Aurora. The wreck happened as police tried to stop the boy. They believed he carjacked a driver a few blocks away. Now, according to a roommate, the man who died was from Nicaragua and worked construction. There's still a line of wrecked cars along one street of Dayton Street and other signs of the trouble that started a little after 7 last night. That's when Aurora police say the teenager carjacked someone about five blocks from that spot and took off in a stolen car. As police tried to stop the suspect, he crashed into four vehicles. The last one was occupied by the man who was killed. We spoke with a roommate who said the man was in the process of parking his small SUV when he was hit. His dream and everything is gone. Everything is gone. Just because someone was driving crazy in this street. And this street is very, you see, it's very crowded. Every day, it's like this. That roommate asked that we not use his name or face. Uh, this incident is un in under investigation by a team from multiple agencies. We're told the suspect was not injured, was taken into custody, and faces multiple charges.